Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about finding the parameterization of the portion of the sphere that is between the plane z equals one and z equals negative square root of two. So now I um, I have a view on the yz plane of the sphere. And as you can see that this is just two dimension, the x axis is pointing toward us. And so right now, if I'm graphing the z equals one, then that will actually just look like a line. So let's just graph that for now. So this is z equals one, okay. And then the other one, the other one is z equals negative square root of two. So this one also looks like a horizontal line in the yz plane. And what happens is that we have a square root of two, which is about 1.4. So negative square root of two, negative 1.4. So uh, if we graph it, then it will be probably here. Okay, so we have z equals negative square root of two. Okay, so now, we want the portion of the sphere that is between those two planes. And so now the question is, uh, how do we parameterize it? We are still going to use spherical because the surface that we're parameterizing is still part of the sphere, right? So we are going to use spherical. The question is, how do we identify the angle phi? Because um, we only want the portion that is between those two planes right here. So that means what we can do is that we can just graph two dash lines right here. Okay, this will actually give us the lower bound for the phi, but we don't know what that is yet. And then the other one, the other one is right here. And that will give us the upper bound of the phi, and we still don't know what that is, so we are just going to leave those blanks right now, and then we will figure it out. Okay, so right now we are going to start by doing the parameterization, but because the uh, the surface that we are parameterizing is still part of the sphere, so we can use spherical. So we can just write x equals, and then two because why is it two? Because the radius is two, so the row is two, and then sine of phi cosine data, and then y is equal to two, and then sine of phi, sine of data, and z is equal to two cosine of phi. So this part is more like routine work. The tricky part is actually figuring out the domain for the parameters. Okay, so now um, <clears throat> for the domain of phi, then that is actually the most difficult part right here. Data is actually the easy one. Why is data is the easy one? Because we are just going to just cover all four quadrants. So we are going to just have the data going from zero to two pi. So that will just cover all that. The question is that how do we figure out the limits for the phi? So for the limits for the phi, we need to figure out the lower bound and then the upper bound. The lower bound is actually going from the positive z-axis all the way to until we get to this point. So that is our lower bound for the angle. So now the question is, how do we figure this out? We can see that this is still two because this is the radius. And what happens right now is that we can also figure out the um, this z value right here, which is what, as you can see, z is equal to one at this spot, right? So this is one, this distance from this point to that point is one. So we have one here, we have, um, two here, and this is a right triangle. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we can actually figure out the last side right here, which is square root of three. And this is actually a, uh, a special right triangle. This is the 30, 16, and 90 degree right triangle. And so as you can see that the angle that is facing the square root of three is actually 60 degree. This is actually 60 degrees, so that what does that mean? That means our phi would actually just be pi over three. Okay, so that part is easy. And the other part is that we need to figure out what the upper bound is for the angle phi, right? So now the question is, um, how big is this angle so that we can go all the way to just phi, this upper bound? And so now, um, Again, we can use the same strategy right here. This hypotenuse for this right triangle will still be two because the radius of the sphere is two. And going down right here, this is radical two. As you can see, this distance right here is radical two. And for this one, because the hypotenuse is two, this 
leg is radical too, so the other leg is also radical too. So now this is a 45, 45, 90 degree right triangle. So in this case, then you can see that this part right here is 45 degree. So if this one is 45, then that means this angle here, starting from zero all the way down until we hit this ray. And what is that angle? That is 135 degree because when you take 180 minus 45, we get 135. 135 is what? 3 pi over 4. And so we get the lower bound and the upper bound. We can write them down. So lower bound is pi over 3. And then the upper bound is 3 pi over 4. And now we have the parametrization. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.